Hi everyone, it is 11-27-2017. I hope that you're all feeling well, staying sane, and are safe. I'm going to begin this video reading a message that I got from a subscriber. You tell the truth about the wrongs happening in our world, so I am asking for you to look at another wrong, another loss of empathy and compassion in our country that is killing innocent pain sufferers, not addicts, not abusers. We are just pain patients in need of some help. I have sent you a couple of videos to show you this issue in this country that is driving people to take their own lives just to get pain relieved and we desperately need a voice and no one is listening except for a small few and I bet the small few are those who either suffer from chronic physical pain or have someone in their life that they love suffering from chronic physical pain. But she goes on, so I'm asking you to look closer at this war on chronic pain patients and opioid medications, what the chronic pain patients like myself are being tortured with. I am not asking for sympathy, I'm just asking that you look at the videos and see for yourself the other side of the opioid heroin epidemic that is not being shown. This isn't an opioid epidemic, it is a heroin fentanyl epidemic that has been blamed on pain patients and is torturing people with untreated pain uh, like doctors or doctors like mine after 11 years of uneventful care without a single problem he abandoned me with 30 days of medications that without the medication will cause me to be bedridden crippled by pain because of the fear of DEA. The DEA is raiding doctors offices, urgent care centers, pain management centers. Jeff Sessions unleashed the DEA to raid these offices. Doctors are losing their licenses, being arrested for writing prescriptions opioid pain medication prescriptions now I'm not saying that there aren't doctors out there that are really well I don't give a shit that they have MD next to their name they're drug dealers but there's an awful lot of drug, uh, doctors out there that are legitimately and responsibly treating their patients with chronic physical pain and these doctors, more and more of them, are letting go of their patients because of the fear of the DEA. See, when you fear your government, you've got tyranny. When the government fe fears the people, you get freedom. So we got tyranny. A whole lot of Americans afraid to experience the consequences of the tyranny that we live. And with more and more Americans afraid, so they don't do anything, doctors causing great harm to their patients, letting them go, with many don't have anywhere to turn, doctors don't want to take patients now, and treat them for chronic physical pain because of this opioid epidemic. Mainstream media reporting it as, as if these people are drug addicts. Government officials, Trump, came out and said, we're going to come down hard on this opioid epidemic. Do you ever hear anybody talking about our American soldiers over there in Afghanistan protecting the poppy fields? Or that the CIA is the biggest drug cartel on the planet? No. Um, 
I know, I know about this issue because I have a lot of subscribers who are in the same boat as you. I heard from a subscriber about a week ago and I got this message six days ago but right before I got the message I heard from another subscriber in Texas who her doctor let go of her she now having to go to a pain management center she being treated like a drug addict and she's not my neighbor elderly woman her pain medication was reduced and she gets less pain medication at a lower dose to treat her pain. How does she manage the 30 days? She lives with the pain as long as she possibly can until it becomes too excruciating then she takes it. And that was exactly the same as I'm pointing to a picture of my friend who died. Um, that's exactly what my friend said. Her medication, the amount was reduced, the dose was reduced, and she just lived with the pain as long as she could until she couldn't take it any longer. 100, more than 100 million Americans are suffering from chronic physical pain now. No joke. A third of our population is in chronic physical pain. Why? Could it have anything to do with that aerosol spraying? Breathing in chemicals and heavy metals, nanoparticulates crossing the blood-brain barrier, could it have anything to do with the saturation of microwave frequencies? The electromagnetic soup that we are living in that causes chronic physical pain? Could it have anything to do with psychiatric medications that cause chronic physical pain? Could it have anything to do with the vaccines, with the poisonous water, with the GMOs that we are eating? Could it have anything to do with the exponential increase in disease, syndromes, illnesses in our country, many of which cause chronic physical pain. So our government allows substances to be on the market that cause chronic physical pain. And now our government is cracking down on pain relief. At the same time, the FDA is getting ready to ban a natural substance that gives people pain relief, Kratom. And I don't know much about Kratom, K-R-A-T-O-M. Those of you who suffer chronic physical pain, I suggest you do the research on that substance, learn how to take it, because apparently if you do take too much of it, you can get sick. I don't even know if that's true. I just heard that. But stuck up on it. Because I also learned that there are organizations out there that are wanting our government to ban opioids. Ban them outright. Because it's just too big of an epidemic. Why are people being treated like drug addicts when they're not? Because it's rather easy to distinguish between a drug addict and a patient in chronic physical pain who's being treated. Doctors certainly can discern that. You have a patient who you've seen for 11 years, uneventful, no problem, which means that that person was being treated for chronic physical pain and was not calling for additional appointments because they ran out of their medication early and wanted more. No, 
they took the prescription. They, many actually don't uh, take the pain medication that they receive as prescribed. They only take it when they need it. That's not a drug addict. But those who are taking their prescriptions responsibly as prescribed, that's not a drug addict. A drug addict is like my friend that I had to let go of, my closest friend in Great Barrington. Now she was a drug addict, a pharmaceutical junkie. She shopped around. She had a lot of doctors that she saw. She went to emergency rooms a lot, hoping that the emergency room doctor would write her out a prescription. She actually went to several pain management centers. She stole my medication. She stole our mutual friend's medication who had cancer. That's a drug addict. That's a suburban middle-aged wealthy drug addict. Drug addicts need their fix. Drug addicts are obsessed with getting their fix. All of the subscribers that I've spoken to who have a similar experience to this subscriber, none of them sound like a drug addict at all. Yet, that's how we do things in our country, right? We're not smart enough to distinguish between the responsible patient and the doctor, even, who is treating them legitimately, responsibly. No, we're just going to throw everybody under the bus. That's what we do here because we're the brilliant Americans. It's sickening to me. It's cruel. Empathy, compassion, a voice. I'm just one of the few. I live with chronic physical pain. I can't take pain medication. I have that brain that doesn't really, it's not quite right. I couldn't smoke marijuana because it felt like I was tripping on acid when I was much younger. And um, pain medication. I remember when in my early 40s I started uh, experiencing symptoms of arthritis. I have fibrous dysplasia. It's a rare bone disease. And one of the hallmark symptoms is a leg significantly shorter. So my left leg is over an inch shorter. I wear a lift in my shoe. I should be wearing orthopedic shoes. And I didn't realize that I had gotten diagnosed late. And I didn't realize that I was walking rather imbalanced. So. I have arthritis. And in my early 40s, I went to see this doctor, and he wrote me out a prescription for OxyContin. I didn't even know what OxyContin was. And I don't think I asked for the prescription because drugs, alcohol, it just was not on my radar. I lived sober. Um, it was just so not a part of my world, but I also, I knew even then that pain medication, you know, just left me. I take one pill and I'm out. I literally fall asleep. I can't function. And that's what happened with this Oxycontin. So he wrote me out a prescription for 199 just sat in my medicine cabinet until I moved years later and I threw them out. Um, then I learned what OxyContin was. 
and I learned that a lot of people were getting addicted to OxyContin. I learned the street value of OxyContin. And I was amazed at how footloose and fancy free that doctor was in writing that prescription. And then I learned that many doctors were footloose and fancy free writing out these prescriptions. Will they ever take responsibility for the addicts? No. Will our government ever take responsibility for the heroin that they have shipped over from Afghanistan? No. Will the pharmaceutical companies ever take responsibility? No. And will the addicts ever take responsibility for their own behavior that those who are responsibly taking the pain medication, they have to suffer the consequences? No. The ripple effect of one's behavior. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people who are aware of the ripple effect of their behavior, nor do they care. So you have an awful lot of people behaving in ways that hurt other people, and they don't care. So my friends, behavior, that suburban, wealthy, middle-aged woman, the ripple effect is the subscriber who left this message, the neighbor who has to deal with the humiliation when she goes to her pain management center. My subscriber in Texas, my friend who died, they all being treated in a way that is so demeaning, degrading, humiliating. But would my friend ever care? No. Ripple effect is very, very important. People who lie. The ripple effect. You come across liars who betray trust. More and more, you end up not trusting people. Great. Thank you for all of your lies. Because trust is gone. Doctors don't trust their patients. Patients don't trust doctors. And we all get to suffer the consequences of this. But those who take their medications responsibly, those who are not drug addicts, not taking the medication to get a high, but they are actually taking it because they can't function without it, they get to suffer the consequences. It even reminds me of this guy when I went to the track to walk and I see there's this huge field. I see people bring their dogs. I see this guy get out of his car with his dog. His dog shits on the field and he just walks right by it. And I went right up to him. I said, you're not going to pick that up? And he looked at me and laughed and said, no. I said, so you're just going to leave it there. Somebody could step in it. Then they complain. Then they ban dogs from the field. Nobody else can bring their dog. Those who are responsible, who pick up the dog's shit, you don't care. And he laughed. Because he doesn't care. And that is really the American people on the whole. Don't care. Empathy and compassion? <laughs> I've got it. I live in chronic physical pain. I got the fibromyalgia. Two weeks now. Exercising, trying to feel better, doing all of this stuff. I walk, I come back, I'm racked in pain. What do they say to people who have fibromyalgia? Got to exercise. But then what do they say? Well, exercise could actually increase your pain. 
It affects every aspect of your life, everything, when you're living in chronic physical pain. And when you live it too long, it's hard to think. So when I think about, you know, just what I experience, the fibromyalgia, the chronic fatigue caused by medications put on the market as safe, and those medications giving me the adverse effect of chemical sensitivity, never did I have any of this. I was incredibly healthy. I ran, I played squash, I didn't really fully understand people when they talked about chronic physical pain. I didn't realize that people didn't eat well. I didn't realize that so many people were eating processed food. I didn't realize that so many people couldn't cook or cook from scratch or I was lucky. This was not any a hardship for me. That was what I loved. You know, so I did have really good health until I stepped foot into a psychiatrist's office and no, I'm not mentally ill. I was in my third year of law school. At the beginning, I was very depressed. I had broken up a long-term relationship, so I knew I didn't have the luxury of just not completing or taking off a year. Everybody was talking about how Prozac was great, and that was at the time when it was the miracle cure, and learned that, wow, these new medications, they didn't have side effects, and if they did, they were minimal and wore off, you know. <sighs> Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, stroke, destroyed my career, sent me into a nightmare that has been never-ending chronic physical pain for 17 years. Can't run, because I get dizzy. So I walk, you know, and you keep trying and trying and trying to do things. And I understand, I have no judgment for people who, who take pain medication. There's an awful lot of people I know do. They think that these people should be doing something else. Do you think your pain is exactly their pain? I can tell you that my chronic physical pain has worn me down, has affected every aspect of my life. And I still don't think that I experience the kind of pain that an awful lot of people do. So, you know, what, what, what do we do about this? And I can post a video like this, but it's not going to do anything. It might give some people some solace in feeling not alone. But that's not going to help this woman. It's not going to help my subscriber in Texas. It's not going to help my neighbor. It's not going to help. Because we need Americans to unite, to stand together, and to fight the tyranny that is taking place. We need Americans to wake up to the reality that we have a criminal organization in Washington, D.C., not a government. We need Americans to care. We need Americans to stop bullshitting themselves and other people claiming that they are caring and compassionate people. Because really, we're not. If we were caring and compassionate, we would not be living the nightmare that we are living. This has manifested because Americans, on the whole, 
don't care about much at all except their own little life. And it plays out every single day. Now, yes, I understand that they have been dumbed down and they're poisoned and they're, you know, no doubt mind controlled by the microwave frequencies. And yes, they can absolutely control a populace with these microwave frequencies. But I saw it decades ago. I saw the immaturity. I saw the lack of compassion. I saw, hey, I'm a baby boomer. I saw my generation. I saw my friends not really caring about much of anything except as it related to their own life. And that has carried through my entire adult life. So maybe we're showing our true colors now. You know, when you find yourself in need, you get to see people's true colors. And now we are collectively in need of change. And we see Americans not caring. How many of you have people who actually care about what you have to say to them? Those who you're surrounded with. Are they serious? Are they mature? Are they listening to you? Parents today, a whole lot of them, don't even care about their own children. They won't do research on vaccines. They're so immature that they just look at those who are telling them to please do the research on vaccines before you vaccinate your children. And what do they do? They roll their eyes. They call you crazy. They call you a conspiracy theorist. How many of you are hit with God, why are you so negative? How many parents are putting their children on psychiatric medication without doing any research? They can't even protect their own children. Care is actually a verb. It's actually a verb. So if you care, that means that you would be motivated to do something. If you care, and you heard somebody say, you know, you should check out, do some research on these vaccines. If that parent cared, they would say, oh, all right, I will. You know, if, if you care and you hear, even if it's outside your experience, if you hear something going on that's hurting people, you do research. You find out what's going on. If you're a responsible adult, that's how they act. But how many people do you see doing that? That's our problem. Americans are not going to unite and stand up to the FDA when they ban Kratom. Americans are not going to do a thing. Americans, it's easier to look at all of the people who are in chronic physical pain as addicts. Because addicts, well, it's their own fault. Then you can walk away from them. Now, addicts also should be receiving care and compassion. But there's a big difference between those who are addicts and those who are not. You know, there's also, take psychiatric medications. For instance, you have somebody on psychiatric medications 
and then they want to come off those medications. And when they finally get off those medications, they begin to experience what <laughs> psychiatric, uh, the psychiatric profession calls discontinuation syndrome. Why did they come up with discontinuation syndrome? Because they thought that it would fool the American people into thinking that it wasn't withdrawal. See, withdrawal means that someone's been addicted to something. So that's why they don't call it withdrawal. But psychiatric medications are extremely addictive. And the longer that you're on them, the harder it is to get off them because these medications suppress the natural processes happening not only in your brain but in your entire body. Think of serotonin. Do you think it's only in your brain? No. It is throughout your entire body. So you're taking SSRIs and they disrupt the natural processes and then the medication begins to put in a synthetic process and the longer your brain is adapting to that synthetic process you take away that medication those natural processes don't just automatically reappear they've been suppressed they're not firing those you know the synapses aren't working right the neurotransmitters aren't working right nothing's working right so you're going to go through a really intense withdrawal and then the person can't function and they get really sick and they call the psychiatrist or the medical doctor and they report their symptoms and what do they hear oh it's not withdrawal it's not the medication it's it's your mental illness is coming back you should never have stopped the medication and they go on the medication because they can't function many for very very long periods of time are they an addict no but their body has become addicted to the medications that they were told were not addictive they're not an addict well an awful lot of pain medication users experience the same thing but what I hear from an awful lot who use pain medication they use it as needed that's not what addicts do They use it as needed so when they're in less pain or maybe no pain, they don't take the medication. Addicts take the medication because they're looking for a high. So to treat these people like they're addicts is a cruel slap in the face. They have to endure the judgment that you get from a lot of people when you're in chronic physical pain. They have to endure being treated like drug addicts when they go to these pain management centers. And now they have to endure the physical pain because their doctors are reducing their dose, uh, reducing the amount of pain medication to give for the 30 days and now they're facing the possibility of being cut off completely. Something is very wrong with this picture but do not expect Americans to care because they won't. They don't care about the air that they're breathing that is filled with chemicals, nanoparticulates, heavy metals. They don't care that their water is poisoned. They just keep paying a water bill. They don't care that their food has been taken over by 
genetically modified organisms, the food supply completely taken over, no longer does it sustain their health. What, what do Americans care about? Their smartphones, their iPhones, their paycheck, their comfortable life. So, I'm sorry. Uh, I no doubt will get people, God, you're so negative. No, it's not about negative or positive. It's just reality. We're in bad shape. We have an incredibly sick population. And it's not just physically sick. It's psychically sick. Very, very disturbed are the well-adjusted. They think they're well. They think very highly of themselves. But they are incredibly sick, immature, damaged goods. Some more people will be left unable to function. But that's what you get when you have an evil, psychopathic government just filled with these crazy lunatic lunatics in it when you have criminals obvious criminals obviously sick psychopathic malignantly narcissistic evil leaders but you've got your country your fellow Americans going, yay, I love them. How do we get anywhere with such a sick population? The individuals in the aggregate, they've got to change. And do you really think that they're going to change? No. Unfortunately, the good have to suffer the consequences of all of these very deranged people. And that really pisses me off to no end. I know that it pisses a lot of you off, but we're surrounded by, we're surrounded by mentally ill people. We're surrounded by secondary malignant narcissists, secondary psychopaths. And unless, you know, those of us who are hip to what's going on and hold the people that we see accountable for the wrongdoing that they're engaged in, like letting their dog just shit anywhere and not picking it up and letting people lie, never holding them accountable, letting people just act like they're in seventh grade, never holding them accountable. <sighs> Nothing will change. You know, we got here because we're not the courageous people that we loved to say we were. We've got an awful lot of scared Americans. Shit, they can't even confront their own friends and family. They can't confront anybody. They can't hold anybody accountable. Everybody's just ducking their head. Going on. Doctors. No, get out of my office now. You're no longer my patient. I don't want the DEA to come raiding me. 
And then you also have all of the people who have to suffer the consequences. No one in their community will stand with them. I've experienced that over and over and over again. So don't tell me it's not real. It's very real. Our problem are our fellow Americans. And that includes, you know, doctors and everybody. So it's very it's very upsetting to me. It's very sad you know, to see this happen. And I am sorry for all of those who live in chronic physical pain. I know what it feels like. I know what it does to you. And having to live this so long you become a shell of your former self. You really do. Then you get to experience all of the people judging you and saying the most stupid things. I don't even want to go into it. There's an awful lot on YouTube what not to say to somebody in chronic physical pain. I don't know what else to say. <laughs>